Okay, okay, everybody. Welcome back for another replica gun review. This is Paul again, um, and today I have with me the Umarex Smith & Wesson MP40. As you can see right there, it says Smith & Wesson, Springfield, USA, Massachusetts. Um, and right here on the front of the slide, you have MP40 or MNP40. Um, this is the non-blowback all plastic version. Um, I got this on Amazon for $39.99. It's still available on Amazon, but you can get um, from UmarexUSA.com a black and it's blowback version of this. But since this doesn't have any blowback, it's a little bit more efficient on CO2. So it has a max muzzle velocity of 480 feet per second. Um, I haven't shot this gun much, I don't have much experience with it, I had it for a couple months now and um, when I first got it I think I unloaded about two magazines just to make sure it worked and then that was it. So this video will be me using it for the first time too. Um, so I'm not going to give you much thought on what I think about it. Um, I will give you a couple things like the fact that um, first of all I'll show you Right here you have the uh, mag release. Um, it has a 19 round dropout stick mag, which is all metal. Um, by the way, the trigger is metal, even though the whole body is polymer. Um, this side right here, this little black, uh, what looks like a button or something to be pushed out, is just the other side of the mag release. So when you push the mag release in, this side sticks out. Um, and then the only other button on this that works that you need to deal with is the safety is and white obviously means you're safe. Um, you can pull the trigger but nothing happens um, when you're on red. That obviously means you're hot and you can fire so as you can see that little rod sticks out and then you can fire it. Um, so make sure you're on safe. Um, it does come with a little Picatinny rail if you want to add like a laser or a flashlight or something like that. Um, it feels sturdy according to Amazon.com. It has an it weighs 1.5 pounds and it has an overall length of 7.5 inches. So I'm assuming from the tip of here to the end of the muzzle is 7.5 inches. Um, it does take one 12 gram CO2 cartridge, which is housed in the grip cover. Now one thing I want to say about this grip cover is that it's not as easy and flexible as some other grip covers that slide out like this so be careful with it. Try not to take it all the way off because it's unnecessary. Um, so as you can see inside here it, just, it houses one 12 gram CO2 cartridge just like this. I have one here from EMG Arms. Um, and then underneath you have your little piercing tab and then which controls the piercing screw in there which is screw all the way down as you can see I'm screwing it up but for now I'm just going to put it all the way down so I can show you how to load this thing later um, let me just get it there at least shut that um, so other than that um, I can't really say much about this gun until after I shoot it some more um, I don't like the fact that when it's on fire mode that you could see that little uh, rod sticking out, that internal blowback system I guess. Um, but I guess it's not so bad because when you're shooting it you're not going to see it and who's going to be shooting it from this angle. Um, but anyways let me show you how to load this thing. So again here's the mag release. You just press on that and your 19 round dropout magazine comes out. Um, it has a spring right there. You just pull all the way down and it just or it's supposed to just lock into place. Let's see. There we go. And as you can see, there's a circle right there. You just load all 19 BBs in it. I couldn't see anywhere whether it prefers steel or copper BBs. So I just have uh, some .177 copper BBs with me. I think they're made by Crossman. Um, I'll put links in the description to, by the way, the BBs, the CO2, this... Uh, Smith & Wesson MP40 and the blowback version of it as well. So anyways, what you want to do is you take out your mag. Whoops, I just shut the spring on it. I don't know, for some reason it, sometimes it takes a couple tries to catch. I don't understand, but you just put it down. Get 19 BBs in your hand. 
Um, I'm not going to show you as usual me loading all 19 because uh, that will be a little tedious but I'll show you how to load the first few. Um, as you can see there's the circle right there so you just start loading them in. One, two, three, four, five, six. One eternity later. Alright guys and 19. And then all you do, once you get your 19th in, is you just flip this little tab forward and it locks them all in. Put your clip mag down, put the rest of the BBs away. Let me just put these over here. Tap these up. Now before you put your magazine in, just to be on the safe side always, uh, load the CO2 first. So uh, just open the grip cover, as I said, it just slides back. Um, Make sure this piercing pin or tab is all the way screwed down. Um, in this MP40, uh, the 12 gram CO2 cartridge goes in head first, so it goes like that. And then it comes out. Um, so you put your gun down, and as usual, I always emphasize using your Pell gun oil. Um, so you take Pell gun oil. I'll put a link for this in the description as well because it helps against. Uh, your seals uh, getting dry and breaking or anything like that so um, you just put one drop just like this this one little drop on the tip of the CO2 cartridge pardon me guys by the way if you can hear my cats playing in the background because they are right in front of me um, but um, anyways you just take your 12 gram CO2 cartridge now you just load it up just like that and then you just start turning Turn till you feel it stop and you know when you turn more it's going to pierce so that you can get a good grip on it um, because this thing likes to fall so as you can see you just, I got a good grip on it if I turn any more it's going to pierce so I'm just going to turn this real quick alright so you do a total 180 basically um, and it's tight enough and then you just close your grip cover and now you're loaded with CO2 and ready to go and now you just take your stick mag BB's facing forward and just load it back in and that's it you're ready to go uh, make sure you're on safe which I am not um, so that you cannot fire um, until you're ready and that's it guys all you have to do to fire this thing is take it off safety and let them rip um, so again as I said since I don't have much experience shooting this gun myself this video will be a little bit more experience for me so I'll give you some thoughts on it toward the end of my video at the ending. Um, so anyways guys as usual I'm going to do some accuracy testing some penetration testing and then I'll let you guys know what I think about it etc. Um, for the price that it is so far I haven't had any issues with it but like I said I only use two magazines in the first place so after this video I guess that'll be a little more use because I'm probably going to end up using about six seven magazines um but anyways guys until the next clip I'll see you later and peace alrighty guys so since there's no blowback action um, I'm just gonna do an up close for you and I have a brand new uh, magazine in here all 19 rounds and I'm just gonna unload them into my pellet trap um, about 10 feet away from it as usual um, so here we go with the first 19 rounds That's it guys. Alright guys, so this is going to be the accuracy testing portion of this video, but before I get started, um, there was one thing I forgot to mention in the beginning portion of the video, which was the review, um, and that was, I forgot to tell you guys about the sights on the Smith & Wesson MP40 made by Umarex. Um This is the lower end model, but um, as you can see, let me just try to not hit the camera. Um, you have these two fiber optic sights in the back and a white dot in the front which makes it super easy to line up your 
target um, at night or in day actually. Um, so that's really cool and just wanted to show that to you guys before I get started. So um, I have 19 rounds loaded up. I'm going to back up about 10 feet and see what we can do. Safety off. And that's it. Um, that was all 19 rounds. Um, as you can see, some of them were just bouncing out the top part of the pellet trap uh, coming out. But um, this is the card. I was aiming, again, I wasn't at a rested position really, so there was my hands were a bit shaky. Um, I was aiming for the circle, um, so I guess I have to aim a bit higher because as you can see, it was aiming directly at the circle I tore up right underneath it so um, again uh, I think I did a pretty good job here but you guys be the judge as usual um, comment below let me know how you think I did uh, but uh, yeah that was the Smith & Wesson MP40 made by Umarex alrighty guys so now it's time for some penetration testing and as you can see I have a glass jar here it's pretty thick glass um dropping this does not break it um so we're gonna see if we can mess it up with the mp40 alright so let me back up here safety off I think the jar has had enough. Um, let me just put this on safe. Um, you know what? Let me not put that in there. Uh, yeah, damn. As you can see, that totally messed the jar up. Um, let's see if I could get it through the top lid of this jar here. Let me just stack that like that. Let's see what I could do if I could penetrate that. Alright, backing up about 10 feet, let's see. Alright, so looks like that's a uh, negative. Um, unless it did go through, um, as you can see, it looks like maybe they did go through and they were just bouncing out of the pellet trap. Um, let's just see. Alright, yeah, so that one definitely went through. Um, I think the other three did as well. Um, so, yeah, guys, that's the uh, last jar, or what's left of it, anyway. Alright, so, as you can see, um, I have a notebook here. Um, I was curious as to the stopping power of paper. Um, I've never shot a notebook before, so I have no idea... Um, if this is gonna actually stop these BBs or if they'll go through. I'm pretty sure they'll go through at least some pages. Um, this is a five star notebook um, and I drew a little bootleg uh, bullseye on there. Um, I have a new round or a new magazine loaded and I'm gonna back up. I'm just gonna empty one or two shots into it real quick just to see what happens and if everything's cool then I'm just gonna unload the whole magazine. So let me back up real quick. Go with the first shot or two. All right, so let's see what happened. 
So they definitely penetrated. I have this backwards because I have all writing on the other side, but um, so they definitely, wow, yeah, they made it through, but I guess they just bounced back out. So it looks like they made it through to about here and then they stopped. So let me just empty all 19 in here and see what happens. Um, try to get this thing, uh, see if I can get anything deeper than that. Alright, so that was two shots, so got 17 left, and here we go. Alright guys. That was the last 17 shots. That last shot was a dry shot. Um, as you can see, I definitely hit the bullseye there. Uh, we'll see what we did here, though. Oh, BBs are falling out from between the pages. Uh, and there's one actually stuck in the page there. Uh, I don't know if you could quite see that, but it's right there. Um, so I think if I turn this page, it'll fall out. Yep. Oh, there it is. Actually, you could see it sticking out. Let me zoom in for you a little. There you go. Um, well, let's keep turning the pages and see what we did here. Let me just knock that one out of the way. Um, all right, let's see another one. Oh man, they're like the pages got like stuck together. Um, wow. Yeah, definitely went pretty deep. Damn, that's about six pages right there, and it just keeps going. Oh wow, so you can see there's one lodge there, uh, let's see if I could zoom in for you again. One lodge there, you have one lodge there and one right there. Let me turn the page, uh, you can probably just see them a little better. Uh, there's one just fell out, the other one's about to fall out. Uh, and then this one should fall out within the next page or two, let me just zoom out again. getting there see how deep they went this one went here I guess because I hit it multiple times it went really deep um yeah oh it went all it went all the way through basically the this stopped it uh this cardboard uh uh folder in between each section um but as you can see it totally blew out the back um so yeah, I wouldn't rely on a notebook or anything to protect me from anybody attacking me with a BB gun. So, uh, yeah, guys, that's the extent of what this can do on a five-star notebook, I guess. That was kind of interesting. All right, so this was the notebook that I shot at. Um, most of the BBs definitely penetrated through the first layer of pages and then got stopped by the brown folder insert. Um, but as you can see, they definitely messed up the back um, pretty bad. But for some reason, this brown insert just stopped them. Um, and that's about it. Yeah, I, I wasn't expecting it to go that far even. But um, I guess at 480 feet per second, paper is no match. Um, so yeah, that's the extent of the notebook damage, guys. Hey okay, guys, so as you can see, we got our tin can again. Um, so this thing is uh, at a pretty high FPS, so I'm wondering if finally I could get something to go through the front and the back end of this. We should be able to hear something hit the pellet trap, if so. So I'm going to just dump one or two shots, maybe three, into this can and see what kind of effect we can get. Um, so this is the least hit area, so I'm going to aim for somewhere around there uh, and do my best. So let me just back up and here we go. So actually, we're having the same effect as the uh, Crossman SR357 where they are penetrating the front side and not the back side. 
um, and the BBs are just uh, staying inside the can. Um, so I'm not going to waste the whole magazine just doing that. Um, so let me try one point blank, see if we can get it fully through, but I doubt it. Let's just try it. I'm going to take it off safety. Yeah, same thing. Can caught it. I mean, it definitely dinged the inside of the can up quite a bit, but um, can caught it. So uh, I think I have about 16 or 17 shots left, and I'm just going to move on to the next thing now, guys. Okay guys, so once again, this is the tin can aftermath, and as usual, um, well the last two reviews anyway, the M NP40 and the Smith & Wesson were the only two to actually make it through one side of this, so um, I can't remember exactly where they were, I'm pretty sure it was these guys here, if I remember correctly, I used this sticker or this sticky part as like a marker, but um, Again, they didn't make it through the back, but they certainly did uh, punch through the big, through the front and then uh, dent up the back pretty bad, as you can see. Um, but so far, nothing has fully made it through this can yet, and this is uh, not that thin. Of, I mean, not that thick of a can, um, so I'm quite surprised even at point blank range. But uh, we'll see what we could do to this thing. All right, guys. Hey guys, so um, once again I have the poor Galaxy S5 here. Um, this MP40, since it has no blowback, is so far in my reviews the highest of the guns I reviewed are in FPS rather. So I'm gonna see what kind of devastation we can do to this thing. Um, as you can see in my last review, the Crossman SR357 tore right through the back of this thing. So. I believe, I can't remember, I think it was 430 FPS, this is 480 I believe, so I'm going to back up and just unload the rest of this magazine into that, let's see what happens. definitely made it through um wow there's actually smoke coming out of the phone um let me just stand it up again so i still got some rounds left and back up all right this thing just does not want to stay standing um there's not that many shots left so let me just empty these real quick devastated this phone I don't know if you guys can see that but uh let me put my hand behind there look at that hole I made holy crap yeah that's not gonna go on anymore for a while believe it or not uh I'd say about three four reviews ago this thing actually still turned on uh, it didn't boot correctly but it still turned on uh and I doubt that's gonna happen I can't even get a battery in there now but um yeah guys so that's what I'm talking about. Um so that's the GS5 uh and I'll see you in the next part. Alright guys, so this is the aftermath, a better shot of it anyway, of the GS5 and as you can see, uh you can see my floor basically right through it. Um this thing was traveling if these BBs were coming out of this MP40 at 480 feet per feet per second. I just looked up and uh, the blowback version maxes out at 300 feet per second. So it is way more efficient on CO2 and has much more punching power. Um, so as you can see, I basically destroyed it. Uh, that was my goal from the beginning. I wanted to see how much damage I could do to this thing. Um, and I don't think it's going to get much worse than that besides just tearing it to little bits. But uh, this part up here seems pretty tough where the camera is so far. Um, 
but as you can see even the screen at the bottom is like popping off and everything um so yeah guys that's the aftermath of the gs5 this thing looks like it's been through hell and back <laughs> Alrighty guys, so as you can see the glass jar didn't hold up at all, so um, I don't know if you've been keeping up on my channel, but this is the laptop from uh, CO2 Guns vs. Uh, laptop, and I figured I'd just whip it out again and dump all 19 rounds right into the screen. Um, so I'm going to back up about 10 feet. I have the feeling, I don't know if you can see this correctly, but I have the feeling nothing's going to make it past that. Uh, white barrier that's behind this glass but let's see what we can do all right shots um that last one was a dry shot um let me try to move this up a little so you can see as you can see a ton at the top got just lodged in the screen um, i'm sure you heard a bunch of them bouncing back at me um so yeah that's about it um i might try shooting this thing from a different angle some other time um but yeah i mean they did get lodged in pretty deep like I'm pretty sure I could push those right into the screen and then they would just drop right down but um there's a ton of BBs inside here just like in the bottom of the screen um but yeah guys that's the extent of what it can do to a laptop screen from about 10 feet away alright guys alright guys so here we have the laptop screen um I'm not sure if you could tell from this uh, shot or not but I was shooting copper BBs so anything that's not copper um these are all copper I don't know why it doesn't look like it through the camera um but um these top ones are all it's I peppered this thing with copper BBs um but yeah they just break through the glass basically and that white barrier behind the glass as you can see just stops most of them and they just fall down this thing is full of bb's if you shake it around um but anyways guys yeah that's the extent of that basically um i've just been peppering it um and that was at 480 feet per second Okay guys, so that was the review on the Umarex Smith & Wesson MMP40, um, the non-blowback version. Again, the blowback version is available on Amazon and the UmarexUSA.com uh, store. Uh, it's about $100. Uh, this one, the non-blowback version, again, it was about $40. Bucks. Um, but keep in mind when... You, between the non-blowback and the blowback versions, you're trading authenticity for power, basically. So the, the non-blowback version, as I said, has a max FPS of 480 feet per second. The blowback version has a max FPS of 300 feet per second. Also, the non-blowback version has a round, uh, magazine capacity of 19 rounds. Uh, the blowback version has a uh, magazine capacity of 15 rounds so keep that in mind um i was thinking that i'm still gonna pick up the non-blowback version of this because it's still awesome um but if you are looking for speed versus authenticity i would go with the non-blowback version um but if you guys by the way have any suggestions or any comments as to what i should buy next or review next definitely comment below um I love hearing from you guys. Um, I've been discovering tons of CO2 guns that I didn't even know exist lately. So I've been blown away. So um, anything you guys have any uh, suggestions for, definitely let me know. Um, you can reach me at CO2Reviews914 at gmail.com. Or if you just go on my YouTube banner, there's a link to my Facebook. And you can just hit me up on Facebook day or night, anytime. Um, I'm always open to discussion. Um, I do reply to every comment because I appreciate you all. Um, sometimes it'll take me a day, but most of the time it's the same day. Um, I just want to say thank you to whoever did subscribe to my channel. All the views I've been getting. 
and all the comments I've been getting have been awesome. You all rock. I love you all. Um, so anyways, guys, I would give this M&P 40 a two thumbs up. Um, as I said, I haven't used it much. I had it for about two, three months now. When I first got it, I just used one CO2 cartridge. The thing is a little tough to get open. Um, I unloaded about two magazines and that was it. But between today and yesterday, I unloaded, I used six CO2 cartridges and I unloaded, I can't even count how many magazines. But um, so far, so good, man. Um, there's not much you have to deal with with this gun. Uh, all you have is the mag release and then you have the safety here. Um, everything feels super durable, even the safety is like very tough. Um, the trigger is metal, as I said. Um, and I can't find a reason not to add this to the collection, guys. So, um, anyways, guys, that's it for today's review. I hope you liked it. Uh, if you did like it, give me a like. Definitely subscribe to keep up with replica gun reviews. Um, I'll be putting out more reviews all the time. And again, definitely comment because I love hearing from you guys. Peace.